The last topic we're going to be covering within the merchandising inventory chapter will be the perpetual system and the average cost method that goes with it. And of course this method is a little bit more complicated than the periodic system because the periodic system we just basically created a weighted average and then we had an average cost let's say $12 multiplied it by however many units we we sold and then we would say that the cost of goods sold would be like 2400 but this this for this for this um, average cost method for the perpetual system we're actually going to have to create a moving average after every purchase that we make like on January the 2nd or January the 11th or January the 18th so let's go ahead see how we're going to do this let's go through it slowly so basically right off the bat we have beginning inventory which is 300 units and they're at ten dollars and of course we also have a purchase purchase which is 200 units at fifteen dollars so like I said after every purchase we have to create a new average cost for our units because the thing is if you've ever looked at a at an entry for a perpetual system when we usually sell a product it'll have a revenue entry like accounts receivable and sales but we'll also have a cost of goods sold entry which is our expense and the and the inventory being decreased and since the inventory is being decreased and we're expensing it we're getting rid of some inventory so it's going to affect our unit costs after every after every sale so that's why whenever we purchase new goods we're going to have to create a new average cost so our average cost right now we have 500 units and the cost of each of these these inventory amounts will be 3000 which means that we have $6000 worth of inventory and that's going to be $12 $12 a unit so right now our i should say 6000 divided by 500 units is going to be twelve dollars a unit so that's that's what our average cost right now per unit is so now we have our sales entry right right here for three hundred units so we can perform our our cost of goods sold for that amount so three hundred units three hundred units multiplied by by twelve dollars a unit is going to be what is that that's going to be thirty six hundred dollars which is our cost of goods sold for that entry and the next one is going to be a purchase for a hundred dollars so right now we have since we've sold three hundred units and we had five hundred units to begin with we now have two hundred units so you want to come up with however many units you have left and we're going to use the average cost because this is how much the units are um, or what the cost is for our 200 units so right now we have 200 units at $12 which is worth $2400 but we're gonna make this purchase now of a hundred units at $17 so we're gonna create now a new unit cost you see this is what the moving average is and so that's gonna be $1700 We'll come up with our new total cost of inventory and our total units. So $4,100 divided by 300 units is going to give us an average cost of $13.67. So, so now that we are going to make a sale for 250 units, we're going to say 250 units times $13 and 67 cents since that is our unit cost now our average unit cost and that's going to give us an amount which is three thousand four hundred and seventeen dollars which is the cost of goods sold for that sale and finally now that we've sold 250 units and we had 300 units we're gonna have 50 units 50 units left at an average cost of 
$13.67. So what, what is that going to be worth? 15, or I should say 50, times $13.67, which is $683.50. I'll just round up to 684 And we make a purchase of 300 units at, at $20 which is going to be $6,000 of new inventory and our total total inventory worth is now $6,684 and we have 350 units so what this ending number right here is going to be this is going to be our ending inventory because that's all we have left and that is the, the value of the 350 units that we have remaining. And of course, to get our cost of goods sold, we just look at the, the cost or the expense of selling that 250 units on January the 15th. And we look at the expense for the inventory we sold on January the 8th. We add those up and our 3600 plus 3417 is going to be seven thousand and what was that seventeen dollars yes and that will be our our cost of goods sold so actually I'm just going to restate it right over here since I've got so much going on so cost of goods sold our ending cost of goods sold is going to be seven thousand and seventeen dollars while our ending inventory is going to be six thousand six hundred and 84. So there you go, you've done it. You've created the moving average for the perpetual system. Remember that you always do this moving average with the average cost method using the perpetual system and not for the periodic system. So we're done now for the merchandise inventory uh, series and we can finally start talking about receivables in the next tutorial. So I'll see you guys in the next one. If you have any questions regarding accounting or any of the material within our videos, you can tweet us at NotePirate, you can like us on Facebook to receive updates, or to share any quick anecdotes about how our videos might have helped. And like always, thanks for watching us on YouTube.